true. And one, two, three. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Final Checkpoint. This is episode number 99. We're so close to that 100. Oh, we yeah. Might, we might just not make it because we haven't planned anything for it. So No. It's, you know, it kind of crept up on us a little bit. It did. We thought we thought we put it off long enough, and then here it is. No. But uh, that's crazy. 100 episodes, almost. I mean, technically with Final Boss Squad. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but 100 official weeks, I guess. Yeah. Of doing it. It's, it's crazy. It's funny that we did a thing for 50, and we had an idea, and we did it, and that, that worked. And yeah. then for 100, just did nothing ever happened. Nothing ever I materialized. Know. We technically still have kind of a week to plan it, so we might yeah. come up with something. Uh, but again, I'll this is, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely come up with some ideas. You're, you're good at coming up with shenanigans for the show, so it'll be perfect. True. True. Um, again, this is Final Checkpoint. This is a podcast where we talk about our favorite news stories, or I guess not favorite, our, what we feel is the most important news stories of the week. And then we also talk about games that we play of course you can find this podcast every tuesday on spotify apple Podcasts, and many other podcast services like google stitcher uh pod pod pocket i don't know who knows there's some crazy names out there but uh they're out there so that's that's always nice and if for any reason you can't find our podcast on there let us know and i'll you know do something to try to fix it who knows yeah this crazy world um, you can also watch video versions of this podcast, of course, here on twitch.tv slash loadlastcheckpoint, 8 p.m. Pacific time on Sundays. You can also catch the VOD on Twitch or youtube.com slash loadlastcheckpoint. So plenty of places to experience this train wreck of a show every week, uh -huh. which, which is great. Uh, it's good enough. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, yeah. How's it going, Ben? How those how those neighbors treating you? They have been silent. Ah. It, mostly. Okay. Um, I still hear shit, but it's at a volume that is so much quieter that I'm, I'll let it go. Um, and it hasn't happened every day. That's good. I'm, I'm still ready at any moment to pounce. And also, <laughs> at, at any time I hear bass in anything I'm doing, my first initial reaction is I hate them. Even if it's me, that's it, pretty it's good still reaction. That, yeah, it's that Pavlov's dog. Like, oh, what are they up to? What are they up to? Oh, no, that's me. Okay, okay. I can't even enjoy it. I can't even enjoy sound anymore. It's it's awful. Yeah. Well, sound is pretty awful, especially really loud sounds. I mean, as yeah. as someone who's growing older and becoming grumpier by the day, um, I don't like loud music. I I don't know what why people like loud music. It's weird. No, I, like, I like loud music, but there's a difference between loud music and loud music. Yeah, true. And that's the problem. Yeah, true, true. Cool. All right. Well, good well, to hear. Since it's so slow, let's talk about Suicide Squad because Ooh, I watched it. I, I saw watched it. it too. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. Uh, spoiler I, alert or what? I don't think we need to do spoilers. Okay. The people die. A lot of people die. Um, a lot of people die. I, I really liked it. Um, I don't think the, the humor worked that much hmm. for me. Like a low like a low success rate, I guess. Oh, okay. Is, is, is how I'd put it. Not terribly low, but I also don't find the Guardians movies excessively funny either. Yeah. So I, I just don't know if I vibe with that vibe. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really good. It's probably the best DCEU movie, maybe. Um, at least the yeah. most solidly built, consistent, coherent movie. Because I I really do like Batman v Superman and and Justice League, the new Justice League. Yeah. Um, but I understand the issues with those, and this just doesn't really have those issues. And it's definitely worth a watch. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I really, I really had a good time watching it. I, I feel like I laughed a lot during it, but uh, I'm pretty easy it's to. It's funny. It's yeah, funny. like I, for me, anytime 
you know, Polka Dot Man was on the screen, I was ready to laugh because he was by far my favorite character yeah. in the movie. Um, I, I think it's with Guardians, I don't find it as funny because, like, I think, like, Rocket Raccoon is, is trying too hard to be funny. Like, his character in general, like, they try to push him to be funny because he's, like, so rude or he just doesn't know. And it's it's not bad most of the time. I I still think he's really funny, but I think James Gunn's like humor, you can see it. Like you can definitely recognize it in the Suicide Squad and when you compare it to like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and I just I, I don't know. I like it. I thought it was really good. It was fun. Yeah. It was gory. Um yeah. I I can't wait to see what he does next, you know, besides Guardians of the Galaxy 3. For sure. No, it's definitely one of the standout even though I'm not a big fan of the Guardians movies, mm-hmm. I like them, obviously. Um, but I, one of the re- things I do like about them, especially, is that they do feel a little more distinct than the other Marvel films. Yeah. They it's, have it's they style. Have a definitive vibe. Yeah. I think he kind of set a trend with, like, the style of his movie, and then that carried on into, like, Thor Ragnarok to, like, yeah. just have a style. And, I mean, those were both really good, so, Yeah. For sure. I'm now, pretty happy with it. Let me, I, I agree. Let me ask you this. There was a, uh, at work, uh, two departments or three departments, whatever. Some other departments had a, uh, oh, what is it? Like a team building. That's, that's mm-hmm. what is it called? Team building. So usually they'll do this uh, where I work every year. And they didn't do it last year because obviously, uh, no. But they did it every other year prior where they would pay for a movie like a brand new summer blockbuster and everyone goes to the movie and it's like for the whole company and blah 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 okay uh so like we went and saw spider-man far from home 2019 that was the movie and we all go there watch it fine now this year the whole company didn't do that but this other department that i I mean i'm friends with people in that department obviously uh and they went to see the suicide squad yeah. And I and I thought what a ridiculously ironic thing for team building to go see a film about a shitty team where they all die. <laughs> and and yeah. that was my thought before I watched the movie. And then I saw the movie and thought this film is grossly inappropriate for anything work related. <laughs> yeah, I you know, probably not the best HR decision there, but uh <laughs> No. I mean, I I think they probably figure, like, everyone's an adult, and this is, like, yeah, off yeah. the clock. But still, that is funny. Like, we're going to go see this grossly inappropriate, violent, gory movie yeah. for team building. Because I, I guess I, I just didn't put it together. Like, this is a hard R. Like, this is not kind oh, yeah. of an R. This, yeah. is, this is a Quentin Tarantino R, <laughs> like, type of thing. Is Yeah. It, actually, they, they were paid. Because it's like a team building work thing, so you get paid oh, for it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, all right. There, well. there, I, someone someone could complain. Now, am I going to complain? No. First of all, I didn't even go see it with them because it's not my department. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I don't give a shit. But I do think it's like, maybe should have gone to see like Fast and Furious or something. You know what I mean? Like not... Yeah, family. That's the one you go yeah, see. Yeah, it's all about team yeah. building and family. Exactly. I don't know what else you would have seen. You could have waited a couple weeks and saw Shang-Chi. Probably should have done that. Oh, yeah. I want to go see that one in theaters. I don't know. For some reason, I have this, like, desire to see Marvel movies in theaters, but I'm not, like, so gung-ho about that on uh, uh, DC movies. Although Suicide Squad probably would have been pretty good in theaters, but... It was good. It was good. Um, Yeah. I I, I feel the same way, in a way. I just love movie popcorn, and every once in a while, I just... I just... Ugh. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, that's that true. Popcorn. Movie popcorn's pretty good. You know what's what's weird is like movie theaters have those cheap like nachos, right? It's just like right. chips and then like a thing of nacho cheese. But for yep. some reason, when I add like the jalapenos, it's just for some reason it doesn't taste like something I could just make at home. It's really weird. Even though I huh. probably could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nothing ever tastes the way it does in a restaurant yeah. or whatever. But no, I don't. With Cheng Shi, I that's a movie I feel like I can definitely wait on. Like I don't yeah. know what spoilers are gonna be. I don't even care. I I don't know. Yeah, I feel like if anything, it'll be like a post credit scene or something like that. That'll yeah. have some sort of connection to the 
Marvel universe that I'm that's probably going to be like more important than the entire movie or something. Right. Like exactly. I, I just I don't know. It's not an opening weekend. Yeah. Movie. Especially oh, there's not now. much. There's not much to do, so we might might go see it anyways. I don't know. I know. I almost saw. I almost saw the Green Knight. I've heard I mixed hearing... things about. It. I hear like it's good, and then other people say like it's boring, and I'm like, you know, I have no interest in really seeing it right away, yeah, but... so I can wait for it on like Voodoo right. or whatever. I am. I am gonna wait, but I will say the it's boring people. When any when anyone ever says a movie is boring to me, I'm like, oh, this is probably something I'll like because you're an idiot. Uh, mm. I don't. I. I don't know. Now some movies are boring, but. This I don't see this movie being like, oh my god, I'm bored. These are the people that can't watch a TV show without looking at their phone every five minutes. Yeah. So of course yeah. they're gonna be bored. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, probably. But I also there was, it might have been, it was someone on kind of funny mentioned that this is like a Legend of Zelda movie. I'm like, oh, oh, I'll watch this. In uh, a way, what, know, if it, quasi. what if it is? They just couldn't call it that. I don't. I definitely don't think that's. Does he gain a weapon, and then all of a sudden he can get to a different part of the castle? <laughs> this is a hook shot. I know exactly what I can use. This I was like, hmm, that's suspect. <laughs> Those little targets I've been seeing for the first half hour of the movie. I can use. I can finally use them. Yeah. Cool. Well, before we jump into the fun news topics that we've worked really hard to get this whole week. Oh yeah. Um. What uh, games are we going to be talking about later? I've got more Persona 5 Strikers, more Pokemon Unite from you, crazy, crazy boy. Ah, Pokemon. And uh, I played The Ascent. So I can talk about that. Yeah. As well as more Skyward Sword stuff. All right. Sounds good. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for uh, the games we played, which will be later on in the show. But we're going to go ahead and start with uh, some pretty important news topics. I don't for, know about important. <laughs> yeah, for, uh, you know, this very slow week in uh, video game news. But uh, crazy, crazy milestone for the Nintendo Switch as it uh, outsells the PS3 and Xbox 360 in lifetime sales with 89.04 million units. I don't know, the point zero four. Someone getting them in pieces or something? Just What's for going fun. On okay, cool. Funsies. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. I think uh, from what I read, like the Xbox 360 had stopped at like 84 mil or 85, and the PlayStation 3 had stopped at like 87. Okay. So I mean, that's crazy fast. That makes sense. And those were wildly successful, obviously. Yeah. And yeah, the I Switch like is were. just not going to stop. Not going to stop at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then, We're, I mean, they're definitely going to outsell the whatever's next on the list, right? Like, it's... Oh, yeah. I, I would say... crazy. Because, like, the Switch sales are obviously going to include uh, Switch and Switch Lite, and then Switch, the OLED thing that's coming out. And if there's any other Switch re- revision, which I imagine there's going to be at least one more type of Switch... Yeah. It's this is gonna be like one, what like one thirty, plus, million yeah, by yeah. by the time that the switch is said and done. Yeah, with the with the OLED version coming out, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna, you know, start upgrading. Double dip. Yeah. Double dip. Are you uh, are you thinking of getting the OLED? I am. So I was able to get a pre order, uh, and part of the reason why I was is I'm just gonna transfer all my games over and then sell it. Yeah. So my old Switch, because you could still get a fair amount of money for it. All right. Now it's just a cheap new Switch that has better battery and looks better. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's a pretty reasonable trade-off there. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Are you of any interest in this OLED Switch? Probably not. No, I'm yeah. still I'm still looking to get that uh, PS5. The hunt is back oh, on. Oh, yeah, that's, that's took, better. Took a little bit of a break to... Uh, you know, we had a few expenses last month, <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, I now need to like I I'm now I've back to where we can get it. So I'm like, all right. Cool. What I think you need to do, if if this is reasonable, is do what I did with because I got the GameFly bundle. Yeah. And because they'll open it up and they open it up for members that have been a member for a month, and you have like 15, 20 minutes once you get the email to go do it and buy it yeah i mean and I, it's 
I joined the GameStop Club thing again just so I can have. Uh, sure. I mean, it's kind of like the a same shot. deal. They get like early access to it or something like that, which they go fast. I mean, I think the last GameStop drop, I think, sold out like within five or six minutes. And then there was mm. the Walmart one that sold out within two minutes. Um, it's just crazy how fast they're going. I mean, it's yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, it. <sighs> Ah, uh, yeah, I, I just don't. It's wild to think about how we're still dealing with that a year in. Yeah. And it just doesn't. It's not gonna stop. Yeah. It's never gonna stop. It'll we're never, never gonna see these on a shelf. Yeah, I know that's so uh. crazy. I forgot someone asked. Um, I think my wife asked someone at Walmart or something like that about, you know, is it ever gonna be in stock? And I had told her before. I'm like, come on, it's never gonna be in stock, but. Um, and they were like, sure. no, we've, we've never had one in ever. <laughs> no. Yeah. I was like, yeah, exactly. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Uh, it's a, it's a fun console to play the four games you can play on it. Yeah. That's why I'm not like too bent out of shape. If I don't get it right yeah. away, you know, I'm just kind of like, Hey, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. So you still have like six months before horizon comes out. So you got time. Yeah. I mean, really the, the only thing I'm really interested in playing besides, uh, like demon souls is returnal and other than that oh yeah. maybe ratchet and clank but like not not as much as like returnal and, and demon souls but other than that sure. like i don't even touch my ps4 right now like i haven't turned it on in over a month right. like i just there's nothing i want to play on it right now i gotta say that's what i love about the xbox because i have the series x and i'm super happy with it it's boring boring yeah. as shit but everything works it doesn't I put the game in, it plays, I got Game Pass. It, it just all feels like a really nice OS and ecosystem. And I go on the PS5 and it's so like, games! But there's there's like two games and I play the cool games and then I leave. It's it's very much like a toaster where you only use it for toast and then you never look at the toaster. I mean, that's what, you gotta start using it for Pop-Tarts. Well, that, but that's what the Xbox is. The Xbox does everything. It's a Swiss yeah. army knife, and it feels coherent with everything. Whereas yeah. the PS5, I had a weird issue where I couldn't play uh, Demon Souls until I restarted the console. Like, I would, oh, I would, boot, I would boot it up, uh, the, the console itself, and then go to play it, and it would just have the splash screen up there, and it would stay there forever. So then I would restart the console and it would work. I was like, I don't know what you're doing. Like that's the weird issues I'm talking about with the PS5. It's just strange shit. That... There, there was a there was a an episode of um, Sacred Symbols where one of the producers, ha when he went to go play Returnal, he like got an error. Oh yeah. And then he had like done every all the troubleshooting steps that he saw on the internet, everything like that to get it fixed. Nothing would work. He I think he even like reformatted his his PlayStation, everything like that. And then I think he even sent it to PlayStation and they sent him back like obviously they sent you like a refurbished model. Um and I think he had the same thing happen, like it still wasn't working, so almost like it was tied to his account in some way. But it's weird, like it's just some weird issues. Like there are people out there that just can't play certain games ever. Right. <laughs> there there are <laughs> There's there's strangeness. Like yeah. you have to experience both OSs to see what I'm really saying here. But the PS5 feels it feels like you're in a early access beta product hmm. that's not that's like almost launching. It's almost there, but there's just certain things about it where like eh, I don't know about this guys. Like yeah. they're changing the trophy thing, and that trophy thing never should have been the other way it was. It should have always looked like the way it does on that beta. Yeah, like it's they're just, trying to get fancy with it or something like that. Oh, my God. It's so fucking terrible. And I don't even like trophies that much. It's so bad. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that for the next 65 years. I know. Forever. Getting this goddamn PS5. All right. Let's move on. This next story is actually, uh, to me, I thought was pretty interesting. I had seen it going around like Twitter a little bit, but apparently mm -hmm. in 2016, they were, uh, I forget the name, I think Saban Entertainment was working on an open world Power Rangers like RPG or action RPG or something like that, which uh, they, they compared it to like, uh, 
Arkham City, essentially. Ooh. And I thought that was, like, first of all, the concept art looked pretty cool. Yes. And um, just the fact that they were working on this idea and it didn't come out is almost, like, infuriating. Because now <laughs> it's, like, I think that would have been such a cool way to play a Power Rangers game. Because, like... All the other ones are fighting games or something like that. Like other than the one on Super Nintendo way back in the day, that was more like a side-scrolling beat 'em up. Yeah, they've only really oh, done. I like, remember that. Yeah, they've only really done like fighting games. And when I was like kind of reading the details on it, I was just like, like why why not go ahead with this idea? Like people eat up Power Rangers. They got the nostalgia for it. It's still going right, on right. somehow. It's still going. There's, I mean, it would have been such a cool idea to to go through with and. Uh, Especially just even if you bring it out at like a like a fifty dollar price or something like that, like forty, fifty dollar price, it would have been a a killer. What year did that movie come out? Twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. So this makes sense that they were maybe Yeah. Kicking both around at the same time. Oh my god. What Jesus is that? Christ. What happened? <laughs> oh <is> my alarm. Oh <laughs> wake up, Ben. That scared that really scared me. Uh whew. It makes sense that they would have the the game project going uh, spinning up around the same time as the movie. I, I I thought they. I mean, maybe I know the movie didn't do super well, so that possibly is related to how, why this got didn't go forward. But yeah, I, I'd be totally into a. I'd be into a Power Rangers game that wasn't a fighting game, like you said, because they're always a fighting game. And I'm not a big fighting game fan, even a side-scrolling beat 'em up type of thing. Like I, I want it to be, let's fight a bunch of giant monsters, and it needs to it needs to be more of a a platinum game kind of bayonetta. And they did all the like Legend of Korra games and stuff. It needs to be more like that. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Um. The so they have concept art that looks pretty right. cool, and uh, the the guy's name on Twitter is. Jason, it's like uh, Shadow Piper. His name's Jason Bish- Bischoff, kind of like uh, Eric Bischoff from uh, wrestling. But uh, I don't think he works at uh, who was it? Uh, the studio. Where to go? Yeah, who was gonna do this? Uh, who was doing it? Do do do. Who was doing it? Who? Who are you? We'll never know. It doesn't look like he said who was going to do it, but I wonder if it was a concept that they were pitching. Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe so. they couldn't get. Um, yeah, he said uh, his uh, his conversation with the developer and publishing team were favorable, but the project was eventually canned. Um, but yeah, that's just as far as it went. But the concept art looks pretty damn cool, including like the character models and stuff like that. So yeah, the style's really good. Yeah, it's called Project Nomad, which is also a pretty cool name for something. I don't know. I, everything's a nomad. Yeah. Aren't we all? Yeah. Yeah, anyways, that's kind of the last news story that we have for Not today. Not like, hold on. Not unless we want to talk about Activision Blizzard again. There's nothing happening. Yeah, no, I think uh, I'm good not talking about them for a while. <laughs> well, we could talk about it real quick. Because you were not here with the Steam Deck. Oh, when yeah. that all happened. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about this? I don't even think anyone from the show. I don't think we had a show. <laughs> I thought we talked. We might have talked about it. when I Because I, I did come back that one week. And then I was gone again. But. I don't remember. Um, You know, it's. I think it's definitely not something I'm interested in at all. Because, you know, I think I have the Switch. Which really will like support anything I'm not playing on PC or eventually Mm -hmm. PS five. Cause I mainly use it for like indies and Nintendo games. And other than that, like I, I'd rather just play on my PC. I don't know how handheld I want to get with everything. I feel like that'll, I mean, it's, it's an interesting idea. I think, uh, it, it seems pretty cool, but it's just totally not for me. I don't really see like maybe if you're traveling a lot, it might be cool. Kind of like, when the switch was coming out, that was kind of like my idea is like, well, I don't really travel that much, but I really want this thing because it's got the dock and everything. And I know, and I know this thing, you can kind of dock it and not really dock it, but like you can plug it into like a monitor and use it, which is, I guess, pretty cool. 
for a price point to have something that powerful enough, but I just don't know utility wise or usefulness wise mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how great of a I don't know addition it will be to the console market. Yeah, we'll see. It's definitely not a. It's not going to sell eighty nine million yeah. units or whatever. That's definitely the switch not killer. Happen. Here we go. But it's cool. I, I wish. I I would if given the opportunity, I would rather play every indie game, or every everything I can on that over the switch. Yeah, yeah. You don't get the downgrade of the switch versions and stuff like that. Right. I know there's impressions like early impressions coming out um, within the last, I know the last couple days already. So I'm, I'll check some out and see what people think about it. So I don't know. It's, it's one of those things that's like uh, when they were trying to make the steam machines back in the day and uh, sure. the idea of it being cool because it's like, wow, like a powerful enough, it's like a powerful PC, but in a box and you know, they were going to have different uh, manufacturers make them so you can get different like graphics cards and processors and stuff. And, that didn't really pan out very well, but because no. Valve kind of put it in the hands of the manufacturers and not really on them, they really, I don't think they really saw much of a loss altogether, but it's a little different. It's kind of like a giant game gear that uh, it's supposed to play your, <laughs> your steam library, which I think can be pretty cool because I mean, if you already have all these games, you know, your every, every steam sale, purchase a couple games here and there that just sit in your library that you never really play. This could be a way to kind of start getting into those. And you already have all these games at your disposal. You don't have to rebuy games or wait for their version for the steam deck, stuff like that. So it's, I I could see it being kind of like a step up of the NVIDIA shield for sure. Oh, your mic audio went. Going on. Oh, Oh, here we go. go. I hear you. We're good. I'm alive again. I'm alive again. I'm interested in it from that angle, but also the emulation angle of, Mm. well, now I can play more Nintendo games on this than on the Switch. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You can load it up with everything. Exactly. Cool, cool. Well, Ben, I think it's about that time for your uh, thought-provoking question of the week. Of the week, 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 week. What's what's the... uh, abbreviation for that let's see thought provoking question the week it'd be like your tpqw there we go yeah i don't know if i'm gonna call it that though um it could be the next uh tony hawk pro skater come on it is very that's what i was thinking it's very close to (laughs) (laughs) it feels like tony hawk uh let's go with this one i I thought i thought of a few questions and I, i like this one uh, maybe maybe be better for the hundredth episode though. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Do you want to save it? Yes. Okay. We're we're gonna go. I'm I'm pivoting. I'm pivoting. <laughs> Turning on I'm the pivoting. dime. Here we go. What should be, in your opinion, the best selling game of all time? Oh. obviously we have stuff i don't know if it's minecraft or tetris but there's stuff like gta 5 like these big sellers obviously yeah i don't i don't think those should be i think other games should probably be the best selling game like what's a game to you or games i guess that should be the best selling game of all time you think of, I'll give you, uh, before I even give my answers, I'll give you a little more info. Because I think this came out, this came I, this idea came to me when I was listening to, because it was the 35th anniversary of Metroid. Okay. And they were talking about Super Metroid and how it sold like a million copies or like a couple million. or, And that's considered by many people one of the best games ever made. And it sold so little. There was another example of uh, Chrono Trigger, I believe, sold about a million something units. And everyone won't shut up about Chrono Trigger, but it's like no one played it. No one. Yeah. These, like that Power Rangers Battle for the Grid game sold more than Chrono Trigger. Oh, that's uh, embarrassing. It, it, like, that's, that's sad. So, do you have anything? Because I have a few 
ideas of what I, if I could pick like this is the best thing. I'm like this is what should have sold tremendously. Like this is what I think everyone should have bought and played. Everyone should have played. Everyone should revere. Oh, man, that's hard. like like Minecraft slash Tetris because I have my easy answer of Resident Evil Four. That's the obvious answer yeah. for me. Is Resident Evil Four is the answer to everything. Um. But as I've been going, and I guess we'll talk about it in a minute, going through Mass Effect, I think Mass Effect is a franchise should be one of the best-selling franchises ever on the level of a GTA. Okay. Like, it, it deserves yeah. that. It deserves to be up there in that conversation. Ooh, okay. Hmm. You know, Does like, any... like, I mean, I definitely feel like, Minecraft is right to be up there just because of the constant resurgence it has and the the flexibility of the mod like scene and everything right. like that. Um, but as far as like, so a game that I feel really is something that people need to see, like, and it's tough because of the type of game it is the last of us. Um, right. To okay. me, because of what it does for video games and, you know, I, I feel like it really elevated everyone's like, this is, this is a game. This is a this is cinematic adventure, you know, action game that we haven't seen before. And, you know, like Uncharted 2, I think is, is kind of up there, but this is different because it's kind of like a standalone thing. Well, it was a standalone thing. And uh, it's just, it's just one of those, like, if if someone were to tell like an alien shows up and he's like, you know, like I want to experience video games. I've heard about them from my home planet forever. Like which game should I play? I, would you know, I'd probably recommend the last of us. Mm. I, that's a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting, it's an interesting question. Cause your mind instantly kind of goes to like, Oh, my favorite games. And these games are already successful. Yeah. But it's just, you look at if you look at sales data and you see GTA 5 selling like 150 units or something 50 million it you start to realize how how little like oh Mario Golf sold a hun- uh, 1 million yeah <laughs> like yeah. i mean it, it's, it's it's easy for GTA to sell that much when sure, you release right. it on three generations and then all when you release it on like the different storefronts or whatever and people are rebuying it there to play with their friends or they're buying it on console or yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah. we'll be buying it on console for the next 20 years uh-huh. <laughs> it's the new sky like all this stuff it's um yeah it's man that's such a hard question because i'd also put like uh um super mario world up there because i just think it's such a fun game sure and then yeah i mean gosh that's a good it's a weird question. Yeah, but it's interesting. It, it, it's, it's weird because you you, you just want to you do want to say your favorite game. Like automatically, I'm like, oh, my favorite game of all time. Obviously, or like, if only everyone had bought and played City of Heroes, would it still be around? You know, all you people that failed mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. You know, how dare you, all of you? <laughs> uh, don't blame me. I wasn't gonna play it. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. What and and so Grand Theft Auto is it Grand Theft Auto? That's the highest selling video game of all time, or whatever. It's either Grand Theft Auto. Or Tetris, because Tetris like includes all the versions. Or my, it might just be Minecraft. It's one of those. Yeah. There, those are, like the top three, pretty much. Yeah. And then Wii Sports or something, because it's included as a pack in for the Wii, so it kind of gets. Yeah. Um. Gets a boost. Uh, I there. think wrongfully. Included. Wrongfully. Yeah. Although bowling, come on, bowling was really cool on it. I, yeah, but I'm not. You didn't buy that game. Like that's the thing. You didn't yeah. buy that game. Yeah. So. Well, then they released uh, Wii Sports Resort with the yep. the Motion Plus. The Motion Plus, yeah. <laughs> I still remember that. Um, yeah, that's a yeah. that's a good one. This is a thought provoking question. It my thoughts were provoked. Good. Yeah. For you. They're a little instigated. I like it. Wow. Cool. All right. Well, Ben, thank you for that. Now let's go ahead mm-hmm. and uh, let's move this little show right along to Choo-choo. the wonderful games that we played. Okay. Um, okay. Why don't you, you have the newest game, so why don't you start us off with uh, t- 
telling us about the ascent okay um i play i don't know i think i'm level 15 or something in it uh it doesn't have an hour counter or anything yeah but i would say maybe close to 10 hours i i don't i don't know so if if people don't know what the ascent is because i i know what it is just based just because of uh i think oh i'm gonna get, I'm gonna get into that stuff. yeah, yeah into if that you want to sure. maybe give us an overview of what kind of game it is so it is uh cyberpunk aesthetic in this dystopia or like blade runner i guess if you don't want to invoke yeah. cyberpunk I mean, just let's just call it blade runner uh and it's one of those dystop dystopic whatevers and a top down it's not a twin stick shooter why is my laptop just freaking the fuck out would you relax <laughs> uh it's one of those uh, twin stick shooters but you have to press the right sticker right sticker right uh trigger that's okay. what it is yep. to shoot and then the left trigger actually aims upward so you can aim over uh cover so if you're crouch you can crouch behind cover and then press the left trigger to aim over it and fire at things that's um, weird okay <laughs> which which sounds really weird and would it be like i don't want to do that that's confusing why would yeah. i ugh, ugh. but it's not um i wish it actually came up more often like, I almost wish the game was Gears of War, hmm. and you were hiding behind cover a lot, and shooting behind it, and, like, moving from cover, but that's not really how it is. It's more just just a twin-stick kind of shooter, and you're fighting dudes, and, and melee dudes, and weird little alien monsters that, for some reason, exist on the city that <laughs> I don't know why are here, Uh but it's pretty cool, and it's it's a very satisfying game to play. Like oh. it just feels good to go around and shoot things, and the people blow up, and their limbs go flying everywhere. Perfect. Uh, yeah, the the perfect amount of limb splatter. It's it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, but it's not like oh my gosh, I gotta go play the ascent, and I got to this boss fight that was really annoying. It's against this little spider queen looking thing, and I I I think I'm done. I think I think I'm done I think here. You're done with it. Yeah, because I looked up, I looked it up, and people were like, "This is probably the hardest fight you, up you've had up far." Da 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 da. And it's like this isn't fun. Like this isn't fun to do. I die very quickly. I I'm like three levels over what I should be. And none of the levels make any sense. The gear is way too convoluted for what you're doing and it's one of those things it's it's a gear system that i hate where uh oh here's this this one has this defense and this one has this defense and this one has this one and you gotta like re-equip for certain instances it's like i don't want to do that yeah i really don't want to do that yeah I, like i i wish more games just had the option to like optimize equipment you know and then like you know at least it'll audit like you have it automatically assign the best gear. And then if there are little things here and there that maybe you yeah. want to switch around, you can do that. But I just, I find, especially with games that are very loot heavy, I find that I generally just like ignore the loot a lot of the time and then have to go back and figure out, okay, wow, I've over leveled this and you know, um, this thing's useless. And now I have all this crap for right. a reason where I like a uh, final fantasy 14 online. It has that button where you can just optimize the best equipment and it just shows you all the new stuff that it's going to equip, and then you just click it, and it equips it, which I wish I just wish more games had that. It yeah, this better. this has a – so this boss has a flamethrower attack, and then oh. it's weak. It's weak to – so fire. And then it's weak to um, energy weapons because it's a mechanical machine. Oh, and, okay. like, that makes sense, but also I played the game for eight hours and never had to deal with any of this shit. <laughs> and now I'm going in there, going, all right, is this the fire? We yeah, this is fire defense. Okay, let me get the, let me get the, let me get the energy weapon, and then I'm using this stupid weapon, and it's barely doing anything. And the the arena you're fighting this robot spider in sucks. Yeah, fucking sucks. And I, they they kind of leaned in to a aspect of the game that I wish they hadn't. Like I wish the whole game was just what is it, Smash TV? Is that mm. to evoke a 30 year old game yeah um where it's just the twin stick shooter things are coming at you it's not like super deep and strategic 
unless it's a, a boss fight or something. But the whole game kind of has that feel where you can die in these situations and it's not it's challenging but it's like i'd rather it just be a fun mindless time yeah and i'm just blowing up creatures and rolling from things like i don't need it to be challenging that's not this type of gameplay i'd rather it not be this challenging because it'd be more fun and i guess i could just turn the game to easy and get past this boss and keep going and see what's what's past i might might actually do that and just to see because i am I am enjoying it. I do like the story. It's very, it's very cyberpunk, and I I mean that as the setting like aesthetically. and aesthetically, yeah. yeah. Well, aesthetically, but the the storyline of, uh, like the company went under, and then they had a they have to fix it before the other people that are defending the planet or something or this just just the area realize they're not getting paid, and then there's gonna be chaos everywhere because like the guards aren't getting paid. It, there's oh, like this whole thing yeah okay. and so then oh this guy has people that were kidnapped and i go rescue the people and blah 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 uh it's cool though and i like the side quests that you do along the way um the map is very convoluted and i again i, I wish they like went overboard this mm. is a small team and they made this really impressive map that's kind of quasi open world like very large areas way larger than you'd expect way more um hidden nooks and crannies to go into than you even want and i just wish it was linear i just wish it was a hey you're in the sewer level okay do the sewer level all right you're out of the sewer level go to the the towers i i wish it was that like that would be more fun just give me a bunch of enemies to shoot in these bespoke levels and that's it like they really shop for the fences and that's awesome but i don't think it's i don't think it makes it a better game the map is so convoluted there's like two different fast travel systems. Oh, it just do, it's it doesn't need to be this way. Yeah. Um, and it just like I just just make it linear. Just make it like I, at a certain point I started a couple hours in. Like I'm just doing main quest. Like I'm just going from point A to point B because you could easily get lost and then all of a sudden there's a level 25 dude just around the corner. Like hey, he starts shooting you oh, and no. you're dead. Okay. And like, Fuck. I didn't know where I was going. It doesn't or... scale. Like, the levels don't scale with you. No, because there are areas you're not supposed to be in. Ah. Huh. Which I'm fine with, but it just doesn't... There's a lot of running around getting to where you need to be. It doesn't It doesn't need to be like this. The, lo- <laughs> the loot drops are also pretty slow. Um, and now I have, you know, the, the electric pants and the fire pants. And, like, I don't. I, I just want to shoot shit. The shooting feels so good. It's a lot of fun to do. And that's why I would keep playing it. Okay. But the other parts about it's like, man, I, I feel like they latched onto things about this that are not the things I would recommend necessarily. Yeah. But you should try it. It's on Game Pass. Yeah, I saw I saw that it's on uh, free on Game Pass, which is great because... Uh... Yeah, I was. I kept hovering over to download it, and for some reason, I was just like, ah, just not in the mood. Like, I'm not. I wasn't ready to. Ju- I had just gotten into something else, so I was just like, I'm not really ready to jump into this yet. And, right. But just kind of hearing your thoughts on it definitely makes me want to play it and check it out because I've I've been hearing good things about it. So it's fun. It's definitely fun. I really enjoyed the beginning tutorial area because the enemies are just these mindless things that run at you. So it's this yeah. fun kind of like back up and shoot at them gameplay and then it's a linear area and then the world opens up and i was like oh no (laughs) this isn't isn't quite right uh but there's some really cool uh set piece moments that happen that are very impressive for this for this small team and for this setting it's 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 really cool it's really cool okay cool uh i'll let you go but real quick finish scarlet nexus Oh, nice. I was, at the, I was at the very, very end last week. What'd you think? Story ends, Overall. cool, whatever. Um, it's still very much an anime. I started the second playthrough as the other character, yeah. and I got like 20 minutes in, and I decided, I don't really need to do this. <laughs> I don't need to do this. Uh, this is my Gamefly game. Let's just return this. I don't need I don't need this. I don't need to play another 20 hours of this game. Um, but I, I do recommend it now. Way more than uh, the demo, because, God, that demo was bad. Demo was awful. But 
yeah. the game's great really enjoyed it um okay. how many hours I, do you think you put through the it was first about 26 that, that's oh. not bad for an rpg yeah actually that and that included me starting it so it was like 25 okay because the, the timer also it does not stop you can go to the dashboard and it's going oh, okay i mean you so, could have very well played less than that yeah so uh, well i started reloading my save when i would stop for any longer period of time mm. so i would say about 25 hours is how long it took to beat um okay not bad it's 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 a solid very if you want that jrpg anime game definitely recommend it well i have another one that i'd also recommend that's persona 5 strikers um oh, no obviously if you have you like if you're a fan of persona 5 you're already gonna love this game it is I actually kind of prefer the combat in this game than I do of Persona 5 in general. <laughs> just because oh. it, it's Ram. fun. It, it's just like you you get to really strategize. Like I just beat the first boss. So like the first palace essentially. And I had tried that boss fight maybe like a couple times before that. And um, like I was getting my ass kicked so quickly. Like I was – I mean I – got to maybe the halfway point of the boss which is where it changes the phase and like the actions becomes a lot faster and aggressive of a fight and um i beat it actually like maybe 10 minutes before i jumped on twitch to like start the podcast and it was like the fight was just so fun i was like damn i can't wait to play more of this and like that first palace was maybe a total of 12 hours to complete so I mean, and a lot of it is because you're going through tutorials for the game and learning the systems oh, sure. and stuff. But I think, uh, and I, I there's so much dialogue because, of course, it's like the Phantom Thieves and you're back together. You're hanging out for the summer. You're saving people's desires this time, and which is weird. But uh, it's it's kind of neat what they're doing. I I just love the combat. The combat is so fun, and that that's the thing that is pushing me to want to play more and more, even though like the story's not too bad. It's just kind of like, like the, everyone talks so much. There's always talking and I'm just like, ah. and I'm, I'm more of like, uh, you know, I like the, the talking here and there, but um, I'd rather just be them, like just play the anime p- portion of it. Cause they do that every now and then they play you like an anim- animated portion of it instead of you, you just clicking and clicking through text. Right. And that I'll sit and watch, but when it's just like conversations back and forth between like seven different people. And a lot of them are saying kind of just similar things. I'm just like, skip, <laughs> like skip that whole section. Yeah. It's just a little much. And, uh, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's been really fun. It's, it's definitely yeah. uh, a game. I'm glad I, I picked up because, uh, I think it's perfect for the switch. And even though it's like on, on a console and I think PC, um, I just think it makes the perfect game for the switch for, for me. Like even during like my slow days at work, I can pause mid combat. If I get like, if I have to do something for work and then I can hang out and play it too. when it's like the end of my day or something like that. Like it's, it's nice. It's a good little game. It's cozy. Cozy. That's good. Cozy little game. Yeah. Yeah. And then just to touch bases really quick on Pokemon unite. I, Nothing new, really. Like, I guess the pay-to-win aspect of it isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be because the items really only hit. They only hit level 10, and you can, like, easily do that on the items you're actually going to use. So that part's not too bad. Um, I played more ranked. I got to – so the first rank class is beginner, and there's three levels of it. And I got to, like, I'm halfway towards the second level of great, which is the next uh, rank. And then I just kind of took a little bit of a break because it's uh, – it's – the matches don't feel different enough a lot of the time because there's just huh. not a whole lot of different Pokemon yet. And so you're kind of just fighting the same oh. Pokemon over and over again. And and at a certain point early on in the game, you know if you're going to lose. Like if you're being dominated and you're getting out-leveled because you're getting – like you're dying to the other Pokemon and they're scoring on you yeah. in your hoop. Like you already know like this is – unless we really like somehow – pull this out like we're not gonna we're not gonna win and you can't really quit out because then you get penalized so right that's what i always hated about mobas was well we're gonna lose this 
And then so, and sometimes you don't, but then it's like 45 minutes later. At least this doesn't have that. Yeah, this one's, the matches aren't as long. They're probably like at the most, maybe like 25 <clears throat> minutes at the most, which isn't bad for MOBA anyways. But Mm-mm. yeah, yeah, that's really good. It's really good. Yeah, what, uh, what do you have next on your list? I, oh, man, I got so much crap. I don't think I talked about uh, Mass Effect last week. Yeah, Did you I? didn't. No, you didn't. So I, I'm still in Mass Effect One. I'm doing every goddamn thing in this game. Um, I'm very much closer to the end of it. I would say I'm in the last third of the game. But God, it's so good, and I'm so excited to get to two because this remaster is excellent. Yeah. And the story is is just a delight. Um. I, I, I brought it up earlier, obviously. Like, the, these games deserve, and they are well regarded and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But they deserve to be, they deserve to have that GTA 5 sales because like, yeah. it's just so well done. And on, on a level that I don't think we might ever see a trilogy do this again. It's, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, but I'll be playing, again, it's the slow play of Mass Effect 1. <laughs> The very slow play, and I'll be talking about it uh, forever. For a while. Probably. <laughs> um, but you know what? I finally did, after hearing people talk about it, my friend at work bought the game, is the Returnal. I bought Returnal. Uh, I had to. Everyone, I keep hearing things. It keeps calling me back. And did you I beat it originally? Good... I beat it, yeah. Okay. I beat it, and I got the secret ending. So I did. Ever, the only thing left for me to do is to go for the platinum. Really, that's the only thing I sh- I can do. Unfinished like, business. Only, yeah, those are the only trophies left, uh, except for like one other random one I I never did. But, uh, and I I played probably five hours of it last weekend, um, after the show. Really, is when I bought it. Um, it's such a good game. Returnal's so fun. I yeah. I just the gameplay loop is so good to me. Um, it took a little bit to get back into it. Um, those first couple runs were rough, but it's it's fun to just be in that world and to fight things and to have that like oh I'm unlocking something new. All right, let's keep going. Let's get something because now I'm just chipping away at whatever's left. And the the platinum's very RNG, so we'll see if that ever happens. But it is fun to just go into a biome and fully explore every room and see what's in there and. And fight the bosses again. Like I had never fought the the first or the second boss more than once, so it was cool to go and fight that boss again and, and beat it and see like just do the levels. It, it's really cool. It's really fun to especially now that like going back and doing the entire second biome, for instance. Yeah. When you never really need to do it after the first time you do it, it was cool to have beaten the game and get all this experience and then go back there and see it from like from a different perspective of not being like scared to go into every room and and stuff like that it's really cool um i think they did such a great job with with the systems and it's a fun game it's a great game to play in the afternoon cool i still i still like seeing on twitter people that are like struggling to get through like the second biome or something like that and they're just talking about how much they still love the game, but that this biome is destroying them. Con- like, yeah, <laughs> it's destroying there's stuff like that. Yeah, there's definitely stuff yeah. like that. Cool. Yeah, someday, just get that PS5. I'll someday, someday be able to play it. I know. <laughs> yeah. My uh, my nephews have a PS5, and when I was in California, they're like, "Do you want to play it?" I'm like, "Nope, I'm gonna wait. I'll wait till oh, I have mine." You got to see how big and chonky it is. It's huge. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's a honker. What it is. Yeah. Cool. What else do you have? All right, I got I have a, one more game. I, I got a couple uh, weeb things to talk about, and so oh, please, wow, please forgive me. Cover your ears if you're anti weeb. But uh, so I you're bought. Allergic. Um, so there's this Naruto game that's been out since 2018, I think. Um. It's uh, the Naruto to Baruto Shinobi Strikers game, which is awful name. Just awful name. It is really bad. It's awful name. It and 
when it was first coming out, I I was really hyped about it, and then I saw that it was mainly like a lot of PvP fighting, which then kind of like, eh, I don't know, I'm not as excited. So I waited, you know, I, I my interest really just kind of went away for it. And then uh, the other night, it was on on sale on Steam for like five bucks, and I was like, all right, let's do it. After all these years, it still has like dlc support so you can buy like the new packs and the new characters and all that stuff um i don't plan on doing any of that yet because i'm just kind of seeing if i like the game or not and so i've played maybe like i don't know steam will probably say that i've played like over 100 minutes or something like that which i've played a couple at least a couple hours i played a couple hours last night and then initially when i got the game and so you get to kind of base your your shinobi that you're creating off of like the ones that exist in the game or in the show um, or the anime or the manga, whatever. Um, and then you kind of, as you go through and you do missions, a lot of them are mainly just like CPU missions, which is fun. Cause that's like how you train and how you learn the game. And you can get a few different like uh, abilities um, to add to your character. So he's not just like a copy of, someone that exists he can you can now customize them and add different things which is cool and you as you go through the game you get these scrolls you complete missions they give you scrolls you get the scrolls like appraised but what they're really doing is just like showing you what item you have and you get different pieces of costumes and stuff like that which is cool and so Mm -hmm. that's how you kind of start customizing your character as you go through the game and you're doing more and more missions that are unlocking like dialogue between you and and the characters that exist in the in the anime and um i've done a couple pvp matches and it's actually really fun although the action like the action is very chaotic because you're not only are you like running around upside down sometimes on walls you know you're shooting up in the air you're launching at people um it's it's like crazy to to see like you're, you're trying to compete complete objectives in some matches. So you're like working together with someone trying to like take turns doing your, your specials to or your abilities to like get the upper hand and knock people out so that they go into respawn mode. So it's, it's basically like if you took a Naruto game and then made it into like a, um, like a call of duty death match or something. <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy. Um, that is weird. Yeah. But, um, I'm still pretty early on, so I'll probably keep playing it. Um, And then the other very weeb thing is I (laughs) came across this YouTube video um, that's like 100 days in the Naruto uh, Minecraft mod. So I was like, I'll check it out. You know, I like Minecraft. I like Naruto. Why not? And so I'm watching it and I get interested. I'm like, I want to play this thing because someone built like the Naruto universe in this minecraft map and they've added like missions and um the ability to unlock abilities so it's kind of in a way kind of like the the shinobi strikers game only it's more like survival minecraft and i've i've definitely played more of that than i have the shinobi strikers game and i'm like kind of addicted (laughs) to it in a way because i'm just like i just want to level up and get more abilities and you get to go explore like the other villages and you start like people attack you. So you got to fight them off with your abilities. And it's just like this cool, like adventure in Minecraft, which is freaking weird, but that is cool. They also have an attack on Titan mod, a demon slayer mod, a, my hero academia mod. (laughs) And, uh, there's another one, a dragon ball Z like mod, but it's all like, like you can do missions, you can level up a character. So it's, it's just like a ton of, it's becoming hmm. Roblox in a way, but like it's Minecraft, so it's a little bit better. It's not like these weird looking dolls. It's not, but it's not super budget. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's it's fun. It's 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 been a a kick, a kick and a half to play. That's, so I've I've liked it. That does sound cool. The one thing Minecraft needs is like a purpose, right? Like other than just building and trying to survive, <laughs> like it needs like when I play, I'm like I get bored pretty quick. So like. The fact that they've added this like mission based game where you're actually leveling up like abilities and your character and you're spending skill points and stuff like that and you're exploring so that you can try to like learn more. Mm-hmm. It just like it's it's just what Minecraft needs. 
It just needs something like that. So it's not so boring. Yeah, well, do they have that adventure mode, right? So. But I never played it. I don't know. They, I mean, they have things here and there that you can do. And they even have like a, I think like a achievement book you can get. But these, like people that go and make mods for tons of different, even if it's just not like based on anything else. Like some people just do like a, like a, like a Vikings thing, or they do like, uh, like dragons and wizards and stuff, but they do like missions and quests mm-hmm. and things like that. Like they like, it's, it, it's crazy to see some of the stuff people do. And I think that's, that's kind of what elevates that, that game to me is because like, it's not just this, you know, building blocks or building, building things. It's, it's uh people can kind of take and just and more, more than you could in a game like Roblox. You can, you can do this in Minecraft where you take something you want to make and actually make it happen. It's just a little blocky, but it's still really cool and it still does everything. Right. So, That's interesting. Cool. Yeah. And I think that that was like the last thing on my list. Cause other than that, that's like all I've been playing. <laughs> 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 so I've been taking my time. Uh, well, I think I mentioned it last week, Skyward Sword. Uh, but I really dove in this week. I yeah. played a lot more of it. So I'm I finished the third dungeon. Uh I, I don't even think I'd gotten maybe I was in the first dungeon last week. But I finished the third dungeon. This this is a great Zelda game. <clears throat> However, <laughs> it, it's kind of in spite of itself. Like half the reason why this is a good experience is because they took out a lot of the crap. Um your sword I think her name is Phi, it's her pronounced Phi. Um, look, it doesn't bother you as much as she did. Like, it was constantly bothering you in the original. Um, there were just other quality of life things that they they improved. The fact that now you can advance text quickly instead of waiting for it to all oh, like, yeah. go out. Like, that. You had it'll still do that sometimes for cutscenes and stuff, but most of the time it you can scroll it quickly and and those things are are minor improvements but they really help the game um and playing it without the motion controls is honestly better and it, it improves the game significantly there's a enemy in the third dungeon that you have to like slash it and then it's like horizontal slash and then stab it in the eye and and it'll kill it yeah and I remember, I remember doing that. It, it brought, it unlocked this memory as I was doing it in this game where it's just like slash, you click R3 to stab, thrust, done. Okay, move on. And, and doing that, I did it a couple times and I remembered, yeah, these things were annoying. I remember being annoyed by this enemy in the original hmm. where like the thrust, to get the thrust to work with the motion just didn't, it didn't work consistently enough for me and having it be tied to a button is so much better um it, it's it's funny too so many of the enemies are just like what if we blocked this way and now it's diagonal what about this what about this I'm like just fucking be normal like why all these things that they added to justify being able to slash the sword in different directions is yeah. so stupid so tacked on <clears throat> and it's not it's it's like it's neat for five minutes <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it's not neat anymore and yeah that's really funny to me is there's these enemies like just the the basic bokoblins who will block in a direction and they'll be like blocking to the left or blocking to the right or up and down and and so they'll be blocking one direction and you go okay i need to attack i need to do a left slash and then they'll change it. But they change it really quickly to where it seems like, well, now I'll just randomly swipe because I'm just bound to get you eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's really odd. Um, and I, you know, I've never tried thrusting at those guys. I wonder what they would do. They just get stabbed in the face. They're Motion not blocking, thrust. right? Yeah, just thrust them. Um, it's, it is cool, though. I, I, I do really like the game. It's shockingly linear. And I remember it being very linear, but it is very linear. Even the the dungeons are 
I, I don't remember how many dungeons are in this game, if it's six or if it's eight. But regardless, I'm almost halfway through it, if we'll just say there's six or eight, right? Um, it's like one room at a time. There is no exploration. There is no, oh, what if I go that way? Or I have a key. Let me try to find that door. Like, no. I think most of these dungeons have one locked door, and that's it. And okay. everything else is just a... Like, get through the room to get to the next room to get to the thing to start the other thing to get to the door and then you're through. And, like, that's fine, but I remember, like, every single dungeon in Ocarina of Time, uh, especially, like, the adult ones, all the, the temple, the you know, fire temple, water temple, forest temple, stuff like that, that were just so intricate and interesting and you felt like you'd get lost in them and... And these dungeons so far are well, very well designed yeah. and fun, but they're just like, okay, we're not, you're not doing anything here. <laughs> uh, and even like Twilight Princess, I remember. Twilight Princess has good dungeons. And though I feel like those are better than, than these. These are very, like, again, these are very well put together, but they're just not exciting because of how short and linear they are. Hmm. It is, it is, uh, I want to feel like I'm lost in, in a, in a foreign land that's hostile and like, no, it's just a, a little romp I'm doing in this place. and <laughs> Just a um, one small detour. Right. Now that I've gone to, I think there's only the three places and then you just start revisiting them. The game is a lot of backtracking. So we'll see how. I feel about it from here. I, I think I'd still say it's probably the worst 3D Zelda, but it's still a really good game. And yeah. especially with the with the not motion controls, it does improve it a lot uh, on, on almost every level, even though I did like some of the motion stuff. But the motion for the sword was just annoying. Yeah. And now, now it feels like I can do cool sword shit constantly in a, in a way that, I wasn't before. Like I, I don't remember the bosses of this game very well. Like I remember the second boss because it's weird. It's like this weird fireball thing, and obviously I remember the third boss because I just did it. And then I remember this one sword dude, but that's it. Like I don't really remember a ton of the bosses. I remember the first boss because he's like the one guy with the weird tongue. Gara him or whatever the fuck. Who cares? He's terrible. Um, but <laughs> Tongue guy. I remember that first boss fight because it fucking sucked on the Wii. Yeah. It was terrible. And it's not that great here either, but at least I can, I know where my sword slashes are coming in, but I yeah. wish they would just let you play the goddamn game. It suffers from you have to fight this the one way and that's it. And you do it and it's not difficult and you move on. And it's just, okay. And, and you got to remember, too, you look at this game. This came out the same year as Skyrim and Dark Souls. Oh, and my you look at this, And you look at this game and you go, ugh, no, 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 no. Like, Tough competition. It is, an, it is an ugly game. Yeah. Uh, and the art style, I mean, it saves it sometimes, the art direction. But then other times you look at it and it... Like, I can't decide if this is beautiful stylistically or just terrible. Yeah. Um, the texture work is is almost intentionally blurry for a lot of backgrounds and stuff. It's very odd. It does have a cool style to it, but I won't say that style looks good. Maybe it's aesthetically pleasing, maybe, but I don't know about looks good. And then I started looking around, and I noticed there's no global illumination. Like there's no, there's a sun in the sky, mm -hmm. but there's no shadows being cast by, by like buildings and things. And I'm looking around like, this is so terrible. These little bushes that are just this little JPEG of a bush. Like this fucking sucks. Oh my God. It sucks guys. Like I don't, ugh. I know it's a Wii game and the Wii's not super, I, I get it, but Jesus Christ. Like this, this game is, not no this is not a technical marvel at all so even with the remaster though it still looks like those those things are noticeable they're probably more noticeable now than they were well oh. and now it's it's like the res you know it's a t i think when you're on tv it's 1080p um which is fine and it looks sharp and visually very clean but 
no, like as soon as you, it looks fine, and then as soon as you start realizing that should be casting a shadow, like there should be, um, oh, what is it, ambient occlusion and st- shit like that that games have implemented in the last 10, 15 years to make it look realistic. And you start, you go to like a hut, like a macabre hut, and you go inside the hut, and there's like no lighting change, like th- there's no lighting. It's just a hut that they put on the ground, and that's fine, but. This game is 10 years old, and games had that 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And for it to not have it now is especially... I mean, obviously, it's it's not easy to put in. So yeah. I understand why they didn't add it in. But you play a, a PS... Not even a PS5 game, a PS4 game, and you go to this, you're like, oh, no, no, no. no. Like, no, no, this is old. This is old, and... Just play Wind Waker. Wind Waker had some of this shit. And Wind Waker still looks beautiful. That's the yeah. problem with Skyward Sword's art style. Is it just... I, I never really liked it. I don't like Link's face in this game, too. Like, don't look at his face. <laughs> no, he, he has got, a weird-looking face in there. He's got, like, big lips. He looks creepy. He looks almost like a Jim Henson puppet. But, like, if you had puppet skin and you put it over your body. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just like a thick layer of skin on top of him with these weird lips. I don't like it. <laughs> well, that's it's cool. a fun game though i am enjoying it and blah 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 but he's creepy looking yeah yeah that's the that's the best part i don't have to look at his face when i'm playing the game he's just he's turned away and he's slashing his sword perfect nasty ass face man Ugh. Ugh. yeah Ugh. i mean I, every now and then i'll see like a like a screen grab of of link's face or just even some of the characters from that game and i'm like I mean that's that's a unique style. Yeah, it's like it, it's yeah. it's very much like that's a choice. Yeah, that's don't like it, but that is a choice. I guess they had I, to commit to something, right? <laughs> they just fucking make Wind Waker. God, they they perfected the art style, and then they're yeah. like, nah, nobody nobody liked it. Now everyone loves it because yeah. everyone's an idiot. Well, they used it for those DS. Uh, DS that's true. Games, that's true. Which yeah. I liked. I like those games. They're alright. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, and then uh, mm-hmm. what was the other one? In be- Link Between Worlds. That one was. I like the art style on that. That was a little more traditional, I think. It wasn't yeah. bad. Wasn't yeah. Bad. No, that was good. God, and now those games are just trapped. Yep. Yep. I think you could get them on the Wii U, the virtual console, the DS ones at least. Oh, really? You, oh. Yeah, the DS ones, because you could play it with the stylus on the gamepad. And oh. actually, I, I I want to go onto my Wii U and buy some of those things, because it's yeah. about to be the only way to play them. Fucking ridiculous. Unless you, I mean, I still have two DS, a two DS that I can go and get some DS games with. Right. Oh yeah, I do still them. own my three DS, so I could just play them. Never mind. I could just play the game. You just have to go. You can't go to GameStop and buy DS games though. They're all like, they're gone out of their stores. Oh yeah. Or they're the down. the one Pokemon cart that's eighty dollars. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. Cool. Hey, well, that's we got through a lot of games this week. Uh, Hells yeah. I'll definitely uh, download The Ascent and give it a shot and let you know my thoughts next week. Um, yeah. I'll see if I play more. Yeah. I'm interested in playing it. Um, I'll, I'll download it on PC and, and through Xbox Game Pass. I wanted I to try that, more... that Dodgeball Academia game. Oh, Academia. 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 I don't know. Acad- I've, I've heard it both ways. Academia. <laughs> my Hero Academia. My Hero, my Hero Academia. I know that one. Yeah. Because that's a word. Uh. Yeah, there's a lot of games coming out. I think 12 Minutes comes out soon. Oh, yeah. If not next week, the week after. And then there's Psychonauts, too. There's a lot of Game Pass love happening this month. Yeah, I'm not. Get probably ready. I'm probably going to skip Psychonauts, too, because I didn't really, really care for the first one. Because I, I played it, and I was like, I don't, I don't you know. You should I'm play it. This. Just play, like, an hour of the next one. You have it. But I don't want it. Oh, my God. Just play I'll an hour it. of it. All so right, you could be I'll like, play. yeah, I don't like this. All right. Because what if it what if it gets a ton of great reviews and you're like, Man, I don't want it because I didn't like that first one from 20 years ago. Well, I'll just say it's not my type of game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but just do it. It's free. All right, I'll do it. It's free. You've convinced just, me. It's free. Just play it for an hour and be like, yeah, I still don't like this. Bye. All right. That's fine. That's fine. I'll give it a shot, too. Okay. I mean, I gave the first one a shot, so I can give the second one a shot. But when did you do that? I'll, I don't know. I don't remember. A long time ago, I mean. It was a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. But it's uh um uh what's his name? Tim of Legend. What's his Tim Schaefer? Tim Schaefer. 
And I like Tim Schafer, so I'll give it a shot. There you go. See? Come on. I like that guy. We just sold the game for free. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Game Pass. <laughs> Thank you, Game Pass. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Wrap it up. Remember, you can catch this show every week on twitch.tv slash low last checkpoint 8 p.m. Pacific time on Sundays. You can also find the episode in an audio version, which is the primary version of this. The fuck does that mean? Tuesdays. <laughs> Tuesdays on uh, Apple, Google Podcast Services, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube.com. You can find the VOD. It's everywhere, guys. Wherever you can't find it, let us know. We'll track them down and we'll destroy them. If you can't find it, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's it for us. We'll catch you guys next week for episode 100. We'll try to think of something special to do. If not, you'll just have more of this. So good yeah, luck. Sorry. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Peace out. Goodbye. Bye.